Monica with Nurturing Connections Homeschool and today I'm going to be sharing 10 things you need to know if you're transitioning from public school to homeschool. Now this particular post is already in a blog on my site and it's the heart behind why I started my site. I'm a former public school educator. I was a middle school teacher and then an educational consultant with grades K through 12. So I had a strong public school mindset and it took me years to be able to make the transition over to homeschooling and to be able to see learning differently, to see education differently, and I'm just so passionate now about helping others find that freedom in homeschooling and really connecting with what is most important. So if you're making the transition or you've already made the transition and are still kind of struggling with some of those paradigms, I hope this is helpful to you and just gives you a new perspective to consider as you move forward. All right, so number one, you may need to de-school. So what does that mean exactly? If you have a child that just came out of the public school system, they may need some time to just de-school, not do any type of school activity. This would be a time for you to just focus on building your relationship with that child. If you're used to being separated all day long, kind of going your own ways for hours on end, and now you're stuck together in, at home for hours on end, there's gonna be some shifts and transitions there. So taking the time to work on your relationship with that child, taking the time to establish new routines and rhythms together um, will be important to helping you all move forward once you decide to start actual school activities. This is also a good time for you to start researching different educational philosophies like the Charlotte Mason philosophy of education, the classical model of education. There's so many different ideas out there and it'll help you establish a vision for your homeschool so that as you move forward, you won't necessarily be recreating the system you've tried to leave behind. And so it gives you some opportunity to look into that further and kind of see what you want your homeschool to look like. All right, so number two, it's okay to sleep in. This is huge. Sometimes our older children are sleep deprived because they're in a public school setting where they have to wake up early. And so we try to recreate that in our homes. We have the freedom to start our homeschool day when we choose to. And so if mornings are better for sleeping or resting or chores or outdoor play, then you can start a little bit later in your day if you choose to. For us, for example, we don't start our official time until nine o'clock. So our kids have time for routines, for breakfast. If the day's great, they go outside, they get all their wiggles out before we get started, and then we come together to move forward. So you get to decide what that looks like. Walk in that freedom, friends, and make it work for you. And of course, keep in mind that it can shift from year to year, season to season. So be flexible with that too, especially if you have like a newborn or something like that. All right. Your school days, you will have shorter school days than a child in a public school setting. So as a former teacher, I can tell you there's a lot of wasted time in a public school day. There's time to transition from one class to the next, to go to the restroom, to take roll, to get everybody seated and quiet, to redirect the class, to address any type of behavioral issues and so forth. And when you're trying to teach 25 or 30 students a concept, it often takes a lot longer than it would if you just have one or two or three students or a smaller number, of course. Um, so keep that in mind. For kindergarten, for example, it could be done in maybe 30 minutes to about an hour, an hour and a half tops. Now, that was surprising for me. When I first started kindergarten, I was thinking with my little one, I was thinking, oh my goodness, 30 minutes? What are we gonna do the rest of the day? How is it only 30 minutes? And now that I've already had my third kindergartner, I can see that bigger picture and I can see how easy it is to get through so many of our subjects so quickly. And then we enjoy the day for other learning opportunities. We do handicrafts. We allow a lot of time for imaginative play, outdoor play, play dates, field trips, visits to the grandparents' house and so forth. So. We have a lot of time for the things that are most important to us, but we do designate a certain amount of time um, for our studies. So if you're interested in kind of looking at what could that look like for second grade or third grade and beyond, I have um, a picture that you can check out in the blog post that has some, some kind of frames, time frames in there to reference and to kind of help you out with that. Um, number four, you have the freedom to set your own goals. So the public school system 
has specific goals in place for what they're hoping to accomplish. They are trying to standardize their education so that they have a strong workforce coming out of the public school system. And so if you look at the history of public school models and what it all entails, you'll see that their goals are often very, very different than what you may want to accomplish in your homeschool. If you are a Christian family, then your homeschool goals may include discipleship, opportunities for ministry, and, um, and for just being with your kids and enjoying life together. And so establishing your specific goals will be important early on because if you don't go in with a vision, you're gonna end up following someone else's vision and it may or may not get you where you want to go. So keep that in mind. Each curriculum company has a vision for what they're hoping to accomplish. So as you go into that, make sure that you read their mission statements, that you read the objectives of their curriculum so that you can see if it aligns with what you're hoping to accomplish. As an example, our particular vision statement for our homeschool is that we're teaching our kids to love God, love others, and to love learning. And so our goal is to create a strong foundation in the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, strong foundation in their understanding of God's word and the application of it, and then create a love of learning. So whatever the Lord has in store for them, they will be fully prepared to close any gaps they need to close, to learn about any topic they need to learn about. They'll have the skills that they need. They'll be equipped to fulfill that purpose. And so that's our goal. And so as we move forward, when opportunities arise to minister to others or to step back and talk about sibling rivalry and those types of things, we can make the time to do that because it aligns with our vision. So keep that in mind, you have that freedom take the time in advance to establish that early on so that you know where you're headed and everything you do will help support that as well. All right, so the next one is learning can look different. This is huge. I think that when we're coming out of the public school system, we see learning as sitting down with textbooks and workbooks and sharpened pencils and sitting up straight and so forth. And although that can be a part of your school, some people do like the traditional approach. Um, some people use a traditional approach for some of their subjects, just not all of them. But you do wanna open up the possibilities for your homeschool. You can do different things um, to help teach different concepts to your children. So you can do field trips instead. You can watch learning or instructional videos. You can listen to audio books. You can bring in living books from the library and read stories and adventures that start talking about these different places you're studying or these different science topics you're learning about and so forth. You can interview people. You can um, visit museums and so forth. So there's so many ways to learn. We did a lot of our learning in the car sometimes. We would listen to our memory work CDs and so we'd be singing these songs and memorizing this material as we were driving from one place to the next. Sometimes the children were swinging on their swings when we were reviewing math facts, for example, or jumping rope or playing a game. And we try to include a lot of game schooling too. So those are great opportunities for improving cognitive function or um, just any skills you're making, your kids may be lacking. So great opportunities out there. Be, be flexible, be willing to change things up as needed to help your students succeed in accomplishing the goals you've set for your homeschool. Um, own calendar. Okay, so you can create your own calendar. Depending on what your particular state, province, wherever you are requires, you have some flexibility there to create the calendar that best suits your needs. So as a homeschool family, we love traveling when everyone else is in school. So we like to take off more in September and March a lot of times or end of May. And then we prefer to homeschool during the summer when it's a lot warmer outside in our particular area. Um, you may shift that around a little bit. You may choose to do your own schooling like we do. And I have a whole post on that and how we make it happen and some free printables if you wanna check it out. Or you may choose to keep a traditional public school calendar year. Some people start in January, some people start in July. So be flexible, you can choose what works for you. 
The next thing I want you to know is that you will have hard days. So if you are on Instagram or social media, you are gonna see these beautiful displays of perfect, of what looks like perfect homeschool days. You'll see these overlays and these smiling children and everybody just seems to be getting along beautifully. But that, friends, is not reality. We all have hard days. We all have difficult days. We all have challenges that we need to overcome. Some of you may be struggling um, with medical conditions or special needs and or just having a, a newborn, a baby or a toddler. So there are different obstacles that we may need to overcome. And I just hope that you'll see those as opportunities to grow together as a family and to um, disciple your, ch your children and to walk in faith and to show them how we handle those hard days and not to fear them and to think I must be doing something wrong because it is hard or I must be you know, not cut out for this because this is, this is challenging. There can be so much growth through those challenges. And I hope that, um, that you'll use that as an opportunity to grow alongside your children. I have found in this journey that the Lord has been teaching me so much more than I ever thought possible, um, through this journey. And by that, I mean, I am the homeschool student in so many ways. I have learned so much about what is most important and what um, I need to help my children connect with that I didn't see before when I was kind of going my own way and life was a little bit easier at that time. So don't fear the hard, expect it at times, and then find tools and resources that'll help you kind of navigate through that. Do you need to establish some routines for a while? Do you need to de-school for a bit? Do you just need to spend time, you know, building relationships with your children before moving forward? Make those adjustments as needed, but don't fear those days. All right, the next one is you don't have to finish the curriculum. And so keep that in mind. Sometimes we need to abandon the curriculum because it's not working for our children. And then there's some things that it's just really good material and you just wanna keep going with it and take your time with it and that's okay too. For example, with us, we did a world geography unit a curriculum with my father's world and we took over a year and a half to do it. The kids loved it, it was hands-on, and we just explored the countries. We explored different countries that weren't necessarily there and just had a lot of fun with it. So enjoy those extracurriculars, those extra subjects as you feel the need to. Don't be afraid to chase those rabbit trails with your kids or to explore topics that they're interested in because the curriculum says you have to finish it by a certain time. If you need to take a week off to go to the zoo and explore biology or zoology because your kids are interested in that, take that time to do it. Don't shush them, don't push down their interests. Really capitalize on that time. You can just pick up the curriculum the following week and keep going with it until you finish. And if you finish mid-year, then you get the next one and you keep going. So. Don't let the curriculum enslave you. Don't let the curriculum dictate to you what you need to do. Use the curriculum as a tool to accomplish your goals instead. So I have quite a few posts um, on my site on homeschool freedom. I hope you'll check them out if this is an area that you're kind of struggling with because I know it's a little shaky at first. How do I do this? What if they fall behind? And I'm hoping that those posts will give you the encouragement you need to walk forward in faith and just seeking God in all you do so that you can ultimately trust him for the results and enjoy the journey alongside your children. All right, and then two more things. So number nine, there's no such thing as being behind or falling behind. This is one of the biggest fears, I think, for homeschool moms. What if I'm not doing enough? What if my children fall behind? What if there are gaps in their education? And I wanna encourage you here to take the time that is needed for your children to achieve mastery. In the public school system, there isn't always a push for mastery. It's you're pushing the child from one grade to the next and they can literally get to eighth grade and still not be able to read. And I had quite a few students that struggled at the eighth grade level. At the high school level, that was my job going across the state, working with students that were struggling and they had multiple gaps because they were being pushed from one grade level to the next without mastering the concepts that they needed to accomplish in order to stay on track. With homeschooling, you have the time that you need to help your children achieve mastery. So if it takes them an extra year to learn to read, 
so be it. You are working on establishing that foundation that'll ultimately pay off in the future. So keep that in mind. There will always be gaps in everyone's education because no one can know everything about everything. You have gaps in your education. I have gaps. You have to think about you know how much of fifth grade science do we really remember or social studies? We all have gaps, but if we have the skill set we need to learn, if we know how to learn, and if we teach our children how to learn through reading and writing, then they'll be able to close that gaps, those gaps very easily and be ready for anything in the future. So kind of shift your perspective a little bit there, establish a strong foundation and help and encourage your kids along the way without stressing constantly that you have to push them through and ultimately leave them behind or kill that love for learning. So keep your priorities in check there. And number 10, you will find your own way. Friends, we all have unique families, unique children, unique visions for our homeschools. And so I encourage you to find your way. And the best way that I know how to do that is to seek God first. Seek you first, the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. And as long as you have your eyes on him, and as long as you're asking him to direct you and lead you, you can trust him with the results, you can rest in his presence, and you can enjoy that journey. Um, I encourage you to do that. Don't try to recreate someone else's homeschool. Don't try to compare your homeschool to someone else. Everyone has different abilities, different interests, different children, different ages that they're dealing with. And so find your way that works what's best for you, know, that, that supports what's best for you and your family in order to get to where you want to get by the end. So enjoy the journey, friends. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them below. And if you find my resources helpful, I hope you'll subscribe and come back to visit soon.